a little look at a lens. The birds are having fun in the background there. I've got the door open. Let me tell you about the near-death experience of my SMC Pentax A-Star 1.8 135mm lens. Some of you will know that it's a reasonably rare beast and uh, quite highly regarded. I'll just show it to you, then I'll tell you a bit about it, and then the experience of its near death and its resurrection. And uh, I'll do some close ups from above because I like that kind of thing. Just taking it out of this, this is the case I keep it in. You can see here it's quite. Got a belt strap there if you need it. I don't use a belt strap, but I just keep it there. And what you'll notice, those of you who know the lens, it's got a lens hood on it. And look at that, being the type of person I am. Don't have to have that lens cap, but it saves me blowing the dust out of there. So actually this case, which is not meant for it, of course, is uh, very useful because it fits in there very snugly. And that's the end of that. Anyway, I'm going to show you what it looks like on an LX to give you some idea of um, size reference. If it makes things doesn't fall on the floor and it has another near-death experience. So here's my LX. So it gives you some idea of the size. This lens hood is not the original. The original, the 1.8, the 85mm comes with an original hood you can buy, which is very nice and flared. Very nice looking thing. The original hood which came with this was a strange rubber affair which wasn't really long enough. Uh, I thought I don't really fancy that. So this is a kind of a telephoto hood and as you can see could perhaps be deeper but it suffices and it means it fits in that bag rather nicely and that's the end of that really. So that's what it looks like on the LX. So you can see it's quite a weighty thing and I'll show you what it looks like on the K1 which is what I use it on now, though I would use on the LX, but the LX doesn't doesn't go out that often, as you can imagine. So that gives you an idea what it's like on uh, the K1. So the whole... Everything together is uh, quite chunky. But that's okay. Helps, uh, feels good. Now, let me tell you about it. Okay. How did I come to get it? Well... There's a second-hand shop, this was quite some time ago. Oh, ten or more years. Over the road, and I've mentioned before in my photography videos, the few that I have, I went in there one day and there was a job lot of Pentax stuff. I think three LX bodies, a number of lenses, this one, a number of their top lenses actually of uh, this an 85 1.4 a star 300 millimeter f4 a star 400 millimeter 5.6 a 100 millimeter 2.8 macro 28 millimeter f2 hollywood the old school one 35 millimeter f2 so some quite serious lenses. So it seemed to me, this is my guess, I hope they weren't stolen, but these people take photographs of people and they're, you know, the people you come in to sell stuff and they keep your records and all the rest of it. So uh, they're aware of people offloading stuff. So they, they've got their safeguards there. So I don't think that was the case. I think what happened was that this was a Pentax film photographer, probably a professional with lenses like that, who decided to jump ship. Because I've said before, I was in the forums at that time, Pentax forums, and we were waiting for Pentax Digital, and then we were waiting for full frame so these lenses can work. These great lenses could work as they were designed and not be extra telephoto because of a small sensor. And we waited, and we waited, and Canon and Nikon brought out full frames, and so did somebody else, and we waited, and we waited. We must have waited something like eight or nine years, I think. And various people just left the forum. I bought my 50mm A. 1.2 of a fellow called Globetrotter, I don't know if he's still around, because he was going to Nikon. He said, I've had enough, I, can't, I just can't wait, you know, I need to go full frame digital. So my suspicion is that this lot were just brought in for a guy who just thought, you know what, I 
could list them on eBay and all that. I'm just going to take them all here, get what I can for them, and go to Nikon or Canon. That's my suspicion. Anyway, seeing these lenses there, not all of which I needed, and I didn't need three bodies, but a lot of these lenses were very reasonably priced. I don't know why. I don't know if they'd, perhaps they weren't. It wasn't, say, it's pre, pre-internet. It wasn't, but before things started really getting, so they're probably still using books. And maybe these rare 1.8 lenses weren't there, so maybe they looked at the one that was nearest, the 135 2.5, and thought, well, that's as near as we can get. I don't know, in the book and just, I don't know, whatever. But they, all, all things were very reasonably priced. I looked at the lot. Yeah, you know what it's like. And I said, uh, how much if I take the lot? I said, oh, what, the three bodies and all that? Yeah, because I thought, I'm going to be able to sell them. I did some. So I looked at the price you give me. It was a lot to pay, but the price per who worked it all out was, you know, I thought I've got to have this and then um, pay the credit card off as I sell them. Of course, it took longer than I imagined. Never mind. So that's how I came about it. Now, looking, obviously, there are quite a lot of lenses and stuff to look through. So what did I do? I did the usual thing as you would do. You know, you sort of look at this one because there's a few to get through and I'm making my decision of whether I'm going to go back home and get the credit card, ask them to keep it. So I looked through that. That seemed to work. I did the usual stuff which you might do. Didn't have this sort on. So I looked through there, usual thing. What's going on? Yes, sir. Open it up, usual thing. Have a quick look through. There's scratches, looking at the front, looking at the back. See if there's scratches or stuff. I wasn't aware at the time of fungus. I've done a video just now on things that can go wrong. Separation, haze, etc. I'd just be looking for scratches at the front and whether everything worked, and then onto the next lens, and onto one of the cameras didn't work so well, so I've got a, more of a reduction, blah, 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 I had to go through everything. All right. So, everything looked fine. Now, sometime later, I did become aware of fungus, just online as you're reading, and someone saying, oh, if we separate stuff, don't, I didn't know where I was storing them. They're in the dark and then a cupboard there and blah, blah, blah. And it, sometimes something can get opened all that often. Film days, of course, so it should be pay, pay for film. The beauty of digital, of course, you can take things out and play with them, really get to know them at no cost or very little cost. I mean, the wear of the camera. So I decided one day, and I said, if you like, if you like the lenses, enjoy them. So take them and drop them. If you feel about too much, you know, it's asking for trouble. But take them out and enjoy them if you've got them. And if you're not going to use them, enjoy them and flog them. So I thought, i better have a look at my lenses. Wow, you know, I'm reading this fungus stuff, I'm really scared. So I looked through them, carefully, with a torch and all the rest of it. Now I had some more understanding. It's fungus, and uh, separation's another one. And I looked through, good. Because if any of them got the fungus, I can take them out away from the others and look at how I'm storing things. Good, 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 good. Everything fine. Came to this one. Guess what? I looked through it, scrutinised, and difficult to tell where I was looking through, but round about there somewhere, I saw all the way around the edge what looked to me like fungus. I thought, oh no, not this one. So I separated it. I looked at it and I thought, okay, read a bit about cleaning. Can I take it to someone and have it cleaned? Someone said, uh, various places, yeah, we do that. Particularly on a prime, not very complex, not like a zoom. There, here we go. So I sent it to them. And then I got an email saying, uh, we're sending it back. It's not fungus, it's cement. Might have said separation as well, whatever. Basically, they, they what they were saying is it's, balsam separation. If you've seen my other, other video, you know that there are various glass elements along here and that some of them are cemented together to make the shape they require. And that cement can deteriorate. Sometimes 40 to start with, that's pretty rare though. I think I think probably if it's in the, in hot, left in the heat, left in sunlight, left in hot car or something, it starts to deteriorate. So they sent it back. But, I'll show you from above in a moment. 
I looked, and I looked through it, covered in dust inside. I mean, un unusable, I didn't try it. I mean, it might have been an interesting effect, who knows, but covered in dust. I looked at the front element here, and there's a little chip just off the edge, and a little chip at the back. I just looked and thought, you've destroyed it. I didn't even get back in touch with them. What am I going to do? You know, what are you going to do with that? Just send it, you know, I don't, don't have anything to do with them again. Maybe they couldn't help, you know, it's an old lens, they're trying to get it apart. I assume the dust is from it being tapped and things being hammered or something, or something to try and get it. And they said they can't, anyway, they can't repair it. It's not there, it's not fungus. So, so really, you'd think that was the end of that. But then something happened. I kept looking and I came across an optical company just down the road from me. I thought, nothing to, quite heavy, nothing to lose really. So I got in touch and they said, oh, come in. So I cycled in and there was an elderly gentleman. They did um, stuff for the government, maybe the army, they were an optical company. They did all sorts, probably custom things, uh, opt optically. They're not there anymore. <laughs> they got there in time. I think the two of them were quite old. were running it, probably been around since, possibly since Second World War doing stuff. I don't know. So I, they had a look, and he, he said, oh, yeah. Hmm. He said, yes, it's balsam separation on the elements there. I said, oh. He said, well, yeah, we can sort that. And he told me what they'd do. He said, we'll completely dismantle the lens clean everything up, all that dust, get rid of all, clean everything up. We'll soak those two elements. They said, it might take us a couple of weeks, we've got to leave it. So we'll soak those two elements, separate them, clean them, <laughs> re-coat them. What kind of company is this? Well, they've got the machine, I mean, I'm sure they probably do custom jobs for the military or something. Re-coat the surfaces re-cement them and what this word here that I keep getting wrong collimate them collimation is the aligning precisely because if one, if one of them's not uh, then the lens isn't going to perform as it ought to so they've got a laser which they do that re-grease reassemble check everything's working obviously give the whole thing a, an overall the aperture seems fine so maybe they left that I don't know I was listening to all this thinking oh but I thought, say it costs 500. I don't know what these go for, more than that, now. But also I'm thinking, can you possibly save it? Oh, and he said that chip, we'll put a um, little bit of black paint on there so it doesn't ref reflect or refract or whatever, then cause light to scatter about the place on the edge there. And I said, how much is that gonna cost? No, I can't remember, but it was something like uh, it was under 150 pounds. I think it might have been 120. I thought, really? For all that? So I said, yeah, okay. He said, so I told you it would take a few weeks because we've got to do all that soaking. Anyway, called them when I was supposed to, and he said, yeah, come in and collect it. So I went in and collected it. And I can tell you... <laughs> job done show you a few photographs at the end I mean you won't be able to tell much from that because it's going to be on a video and uh, I should have got tried to have got more where you could really see and some of the portraits where they've been softened anyway but I will tell you that it has a certain something and it has the same something I've noticed as the 85 1.4 A star and also I did have a 400 2.8 A star. Massive thing. Incidentally, that was a bit dry. It was internal focus, so it was very light, but it was a bit sort of jittery, dry. And I did say to them, I went back to him, I did ask him, I said, could you um, dismantle this, just re-grease it, because it's a bit rattly. And, uh, and he looked at the lens and he said, no, which surprised me, because I thought it's got to be a lot simpler than what you've done here. But he said, no. He said, that lens that 400 2 point there's probably only about two or three people in Japan, Pentax, who made them. 
because everything's got to be aligned. You've got to take into account with so much metal, the expansion of the glass. So to get that set up properly, once you've taken it apart, put it back together again, even if it's just cleaning the, the um, focus helicoil, he said, no, 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 we, wouldn't, we, won't, we won't touch that. He said, I think we'll have to send it back to Pentax. In the end, I, I sold it because it was just 400 2.8, massive, gorgeous. I'm after a 300 2.8, not quite so big. But I've noticed the A-Stars have a certain life to them which I like. Not so much, so far, not so much the 300. But the 85, the 135, the 400, which I have, and I would suspect the 300. Anyway, I'll, I'll have a look from above, and I'll just show you the close-ups of uh, what goes on with that. Okay, here it is. I'll take this off. As I say, it's not the most elegant looking thing, but it does the job, as you can see. I do keep on on these A-Star lenses that I've got a filter on there. People argue this, that and the other, but I don't think, as this is a Pentax SMC filter. So I went to, it's difficult to get these these days, I got this a while ago. Because, well, why not? I don't think it might. I haven't seen it make any difference. People have done tests and found it don't make any difference. But I'm thinking with a lens like this, you know, if you, if you damage it, <coughs> you're done for, really. Because of the age and you won't be able to get parts from that front element. I mean, what are you going to do? So it rarely comes off. But it has now. So I can show you. Now, I'll just show you around. It's a user. Look, you can see the guy used it. It's very positive that um, and this, of course. Perfect. No hint of oil that I can see. Now, this is going to be tricky. See if I get a bit more light here. Excuse me whilst I see if I can find it. Aha! Now, just there. Just where my finger is on the front element, you may be able to see that little chip which has been blacked out a bit. That relates to, if I keep my finger there, when it's on camera, it relates to being here. Oh, you can just see it there, yes. So it's there and the camera. So what that means is the 35 millimeter frame straight edges there, straight there, straight there, straight there. So if that chip was right in the corner, you might encroach into the frame of the 35 millimeter full frame, but it's actually in a place where the lens isn't covering that anyway. So that was fortunate. And there was a tiny little um, chip, which I don't know if I can see. No, I can't see it. There was a tiniest of little chips right on the edge there. So I'm thinking, that was lucky. Result being, good as new. Focusing on this is very um, weighty. Put the cover on, you know why. There's no... Um, you know, not going to play about with that. Reason being, of course, at 1 1.8, 135, 1 1.8, focusing tends to be, you know, you've got to be like that. Anyway. 
there we go then. So, in the end, sorted, nearly killed. Strange, isn't it, that that company should exist within five minutes cycle and was able to do that for that price. It's almost unbelievable. But the result is live to fight another day. See you next time.